Mr. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you?
How could I forget a woman such as yourself? A woman such as me? What a sweet talker you are. Remind me of how we met? Emily, it hurts me that you could doubt my sincerity. I thought we'd gotten past that stage by now. Don't take it like that, Louis. I was only joking. I thought you were making fun of me. I thought you were someone I could trust. I'm, I'm hurt to see that you're still at the stage of testing me, Duchess. Listen, Louis, I am sorry. I really didn't want to hurt you. Forget what I just said. It was clumsy of me. If you say so. Let's go with that, then. Didn't see me, didn't know me. Push any harder and I'll make a fool of myself. Right, time to go to the manor. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Emily, please excuse my insisting, but you... haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily. 
But you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Sir, may I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sarah's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But, sir, may rest assured, we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that sir's mother may be hiding on the island, and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. He must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Inscription and Nessis, me fili quantilia produncia mundus vergatur. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I tend to agree. No way. 
way I'm leaving without finding out about Mother. Looks like the barrel's been broken for quite some time. Wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. Aha. Uh -huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. Hmm. The powder's wet. Not surprising, given the dampness of the dock. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. anything to do with you, Mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. Apparently, someone on this island has gone through a whole lot of trouble to arm themselves. I really must find you, dear Mother, and quickly, too. Board. Probably comes from this part of the wharf. The wood is slightly eaten away, of course, but it still would have been fine if it weren't smashed. not right about this floorboard. It's different from the rest. Ah, uh, shit! Uh, it's not coming up. I'll never manage it barehanded. I need something to lever it with. Somebody replaced it recently. But it looks like it's fixed pretty solidly in place. It's going to be tough to rip it out of here. might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Honey, the remedy of the gods. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contract, I put my money on cannon powder. This might just come in handy. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. 
No one seems to have used any. touched for a good long time. A lantern. Nothing special. Let's see what's hidden inside. Let's look. slightest idea what it says. It's too badly written, I, I can't make out the address. The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Probably a Dutchman. This envelope is meant for the Vatican. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI, born Giovanni Brasci. I wonder which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person. <laughs> Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Riche. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richer. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name. Okay. But here you go even further, by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think! Godoy, Godoy, Manuel Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But, just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but... I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. Let's see what's hidden inside. Let's look. An address in Cairo, Egypt. Mortimer communicates with the whole world, apparently.
That does it. Let's see what's hidden inside. There's a book and also a bag. The Mysterium Cosmographicum. I know that book well. Mother used to read passages from it to me all the time. And judging from what I can see, it's the same one as hers. For crying out loud, what's happened to you, Mother? Look inside the bag. A little food, a few toiletries, a small key, and some kind of black powder. Fruit, a piece of bacon, and some bread. The fruit's still firm. And the bread's a bit stale. From the smell, this food's been here roughly two days. And if it's rationed, there's enough left to last two more days. Shit, those are definitely my mother's things. I recognize her hairpins. This bag smells of her perfume. A piece of soap some oils and her powder puff. What does all this mean? An iron key completely rusted. You never know. It might be useful. I hope Mother wasn't counting on it. The bottom of the bag is covered in black powder. And judging by its consistency, it's the same type of powder that I found earlier. This just gets better and better. Right. Just in case, I'll take it all. I'll give it back to Mother when I see her. So, let's go through this. My mother's been hiding pieces of bread between the rotten boards of the wharf in the middle of the night. That's not normal. And if that weren't enough, Looks now like she's armed. Meanwhile, she also takes the time to send out letters, reassuring whoever might be interested that she's having a fabulous time here. So odd. So very odd. And that's not even all I've noticed. But maybe I had to move on to the manor now. They'll be waiting for me. At least I hope so. Latin inscription. And Nessis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus orgatru. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop?
Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Vice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew, my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. Uh, you said you work together. What do you do exactly? Be it mother or myself, our motto has always been discretion in all things, and to promise to never betray a word of honor. Was your secret safe with mother? Even more so with me. You have convinced me. The mystery with which your mother manages her business proves that she carries your motto close to her heart. Your words seem sincere, my son. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean... Yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on, just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God 
that no one other than your mother will read it? Your Eminence, that's just not possible for me. Why is that? I've always had a Cartesian mind, and I won't make false promises. I respect you too much for that. I spend my time trying to find logical and reasonable answers to problems which, at first glance, may seem supernatural. I'm not saying I don't believe in God as a concept. I just don't believe in the God of your sacred texts. And I don't want to lie to you. Even though your answer does shock me, my son, I shall only hear your honesty. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Nietzsche. escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priests' safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. No, no, no. 